Okay, we're starting with the pharynx and the esophagus. So the back of the throat. So back in this area. Uh, well, here we go. Here's the pharynx. It's broken into three regions. The nasopharynx is behind the nose. The oral pharynx is behind the mouth. And the laryngopharynx is the area where the vocal cords are. So pharynx is simply a passageway for food, water, and air. And like I, you know, it connects into three, well, it's got three sections. That term bolus <clears throat> is a term used for uh, food that's, that's been chewed up or it's entering the esophagus, pharyngeal re region. Okay, now the esophagus. Really nothing to it. If you go down to this area, you can see here it comes down and it's breaking down a little bit of the tissue as it changes. The esophagus connects the stomach to the pharynx. And it is. That's where food and water will go down. There's actually what are called a sphincter. A sphincter is a valve. It's a smooth muscle valve. It's open when food is entering the stomach but then closes to make sure so food doesn't go back up into the esophagus. There are actually sphincters here at the end of the stomach that control passage into the duodenum, which is the small intestine. But yeah, it's a, just a passageway. Now, there is what is called a swallow reflex. And here are the steps of it. Now, this one goes into a little more detail, but basically swallowing food the tongue moves food to the back of the throat you can see here the soft palate see how it raises up and prevents anything from going into the nasal cavity this is part of the swallow reflex food is being forced down this way now the epiglottis closes over the um, glottis to keep food and water from going down the trachea Breathing stops momentarily because the epiglottis is sealing off the glottis, so no air is coming out of the trachea. This part raises up. The tongue moves it to the back of the throat, and then in, once it's in, in here, excuse me, it says esophageal sphincter. Um, these are constrictor muscles, and they will push the food down the esophagus. Okay, in this demonstration, I'm going to do this one. You can see a little bolus or a piece of food is moving down. And you see how the epiglottis right there folded over and kept it from going down the trachea. And you can kind of see it here. It's connected by a ligament, which allows it to flop down like that. And yeah, it's supposed to close over the glottis. And you can see in that video how quickly, what, see, it keeps it from going and it forces it down the esophagus. Now, that's saying that if something does get in the trachea, that the cough reflex will remove it. And you can see that happening right there. All right, now the stomach. Now, this picture that I gave you, this is a really good picture. And you got a little bit of text on the side. Um, I'll probably change that. But as far as, um, so food's coming down this way, and I'm going to use this picture for this. So here is called the lower esophageal sphincter. It looks like a little valve. It's made of smooth muscle. These are the regions of the stomach. So food is entering this way. The area right below the esophagus is called the cardiac region, or cardia. It's got to be because when acid splashes on the esophagus, that's what heartburn is. So this little area is not very big called the cardiac region. This area up here where it's curved is the fundic region. These areas coming this way, this is called the greater curvature. This is the lesser curvature, but all this middle section is the body of the stomach. This narrow portion here is the pyloric region, and that little part on the end is called the pyloric sphincter. It controls what goes into the duodenum. So the part of the, the pyloric is the section that connects to the duodenum. And like I said, the fundus, it's more of a landmark. Food kind of piles up to this area. Most of the time this has air in it, so you can see it on an x-ray. It's always a landmark. But once food enters this and it mixes with all the stomach acid, it becomes a substance called chyme, which is like a food paste. All right, so I showed you this. That little valve is also called the cardiac sphincter. 
um, cardiac region right below the esophagus, the fundic region, the body region, and the pylorus, which is that little narrow section. Now, this is showing some of the vascularization of the entire digestive system. You can actually see, look at all the, there's the arteries and veins. And if you go back up here, I mean, look at the liver. Uh, we kind of talked about this a little bit, but you can create a hole. Look how many, we talked about it as far as the hepatic artery and vein, but you can see all of the, the vessels in the liver. The liver has two venous systems. One's called the portal system that's draining blood from the, the GI tract. And then it also has the hepatic artery and vein. If you go down to the bottom here, look, you can see all of the arteries and veins. And so that's just kind of a general overview of, and then there's the stomach of all the different arteries inside the... Okay, here is the stomach. Here's a digital representation of the stomach. First thing you'll notice, here's the esophagus. See how it comes down, attach it to the top. These are the bands of muscle that are found in the stomach. The stomach's a big muscular pouch. And then over here, oop. let's turn it this way. You can see the rugae on the inside. And then if you go that way, if you come up under here, um, sometimes this program doesn't mind me, but over there would be the pyloric sphincter. And then up here at the top is the lower esophageal sphincter. But yeah, and there's the duodenum where it connects and you can see it comes down with the small intestine. But yeah, the stomach is just um, you know up here in the corner. Now it has stomach serosa. I don't, I mean, if I hide this, I'm afraid, yeah, the entire stomach is gonna go away. But up underneath there, okay, so here would be the region. So the fundic is up here. This is called the cardiac region right below where that sphincter is located. The fundic is that part that curves up at the top. So apparently when a person's eating, this sphincter is closed, and if depending on how much food is eaten, the stomach will fill up. It never fills up to that point. That's usually got air in it. It's a landmark. This is called the greater curvature, the lesser curvature. We really don't talk much about that. And then um, this whole middle section is the body of the stomach. And then you can kind of see, and this is the only one, it's not really... Uh, narrow but right down here would be the pyloric region and there's the pancreas here's the gallbladder the liver and you can see you uh, you can actually kind of tell where they uh, they connect and then here's all as far as connecting the duodenum and then here's all the vascularization see all the arteries and veins that come to the stomach what that is saying says gastric secretions there is um, another enzyme in the stomach. So a gastric gland in the stomach actually looks like this. So here's some mucus. Now mucus is produced in the stomach to keep the acid from eroding the lining. Gastric pits are opening into these openings, excuse me, into these little gastric glands. And if you go just a little further in I want to, I want this by itself. So what that is showing, so here's the lining of the stomach. This is called a gastric gland. So it comes all the way down and goes up like this. Here's some mucus. The lower levels have uh, two cell types. And this is showing a reaction in which hydrochloric acid is being produced. And that's very important. And here's pepsin to pepsinogen. So we're going to go to that next. If I can get there. Here we go. And yes, good. I like these, these pictures. So here's the gastric pit. At the top, you have these goblet cells or, you know, mucus cells that are making mucus. It's protective. And the bottom part of this gland, see, it comes up and it turns and goes back up this side. Uh, you have what are called parietal cells. Just think of pH. And then you have chi cells. Parietal cells here produce two things, hydrochloric acid and something called intrinsic factor. Hydrochloric acid is needed to activate a protein enzyme. All protein enzymes are released inactive. 
They have to be released inactive, otherwise they would destroy the cell that's producing them. Hydrochloric acid mixes with a, an inactive protein enzyme in the stomach called pepsinogen, and we'll get to that in a second. Here's the other thing that parietal cells produce, something called intrinsic factor, which allows for the absorption of vitamin B12 from the diet. Uh, if a person has low vitamin B12, it affects red blood cell production, so it's really important. And vitamin B12 is actually called extrinsic factor, got another name. Chief cells produce pepsinogen, and I um, need to add some more to this. Yeah, pepsinogen is an inactive protein enzyme, and it activates, basically, this is inactive. When it mixes with hydrochloric acid, it becomes pepsin. So that's what that this diagram is showing. So here's gastrin, which is a hormone that activates stomach acid. So here's the reaction. Uh, don't worry about this part, but see the here's the HCl being produced. Here's a chief cell producing pepsinogen, and when these mix together, it's a chemical reaction, you get pepsin. Pepsin is now active. Pepsin um, breaks down proteins into peptides, so it starts protein digestion. If somebody is low in hydrochloric acid, they have to watch their diet because they will not be able to digest proteins as well. So that's enzyme number two, pepsin. The inactive form is pepsinogen. If you watch these videos and when you come to this section, this is going to have more to it. Gastric juice is basically hydrochloric acid and all the enzymes mixed together. A little bit of mucus. Chyme, like I was saying, is the uh, yellow, it's kind of got a yellow look to it. It's what's left of the food. Um, you can see it here. And see, this is peristalsis. See how that's, well, it's, it's, the stomach is shaking it around, and now it's showing how it goes into the small intestine, but you can tell if you get close. See, that's chyme, this yellow. It's like a food paste. So here's the fundic. I was telling you, see, it kind of fills up to here. Here's where the cardiac would be. See the lower esophageal sphincter. Here's the pyloric sphincter, and it's showing the stomach kind of, and here it's completely shut off. Same thing there, and it's tossing everything around, and now it's moving into the small intestine. Okay, well, this section is called the sphincters. That always sounds funny. Here's the stomach. Here's the transverse colon. Here's the small intestine. And it, it's not, a, it's, it's an okay representation of this. So there's the, and this says the fundic pyloric layer. So the fundic's up here, the pyloric. But you can tell when you get down here close there we go, finally. <laughs> um, see how it narrows, and you can see the inside of the duodenum. Uh, it's not the greatest picture, but it is kind of showing here would be where the pyloric sphincter is. And then if you go at the top, you can see it up here as well. If you get a little closer, um, well, maybe I'll do the, there's the esophagus, sorry. And then you can see up there, I was trying to get a little closer, there's the lower esophageal sphincter. And if you go back here, let me see what we find, um, which is the bones. But there's actually there, and it's not showing it. You can see on our little display, this is the ilium. And then here is the cecum. There's the appendix. Uh, if you open this up, well, not, not going to work. I was going to say a lot of times we will open up this little... Uh, the cecum portion because it looks like it's got a little cul-de-sac in the bottom but that's where it connects so just wanted to show some of the uh, sphincters of valve and those are some of the sphincters of the stomach yeah that's a video I just wanted to show you some of the sphincters of the stomach so that's the function of the stomach. Stomach is there to hold the food, mix it around, produce hydrochloric acid, and it does start protein digestion. There are some, there's another enzyme for butter fat in the stomach, don't really cover it. 
So we're not going to worry about it. But uh, reg regulation of gastric secretion is uh, gastrin. It's a hormone called gastrin. And it was actually in our pitcher we were using. You can see it there on the bottom. Uh, it just increases gastric activity. Okay, and here, here's the stomach. And see, this is all the small intestine. That kind of shows how long it actually is. Now, the pancreas, it's an accessory organ. Um, <clears throat> Pancreatic cells are called pancreatic aceni. Aceni is a term in histology for groups of cells. Um, there is a duct that connects all of these little smaller ducts that are the pancreas makes all these chemicals, and then the main duct is how it dumps into the small intestine. So let me go through this. Now, there are a ton of enzymes for the pancreas. And in our outline, so there's the, the peristalsis example. Um, this picture of a pancreas is pretty good. That's pretty, pretty good representation of it. This is called an islet of Langerhans. <clears throat> Covered that in endocrine, so we're not going to do that now. Or a pancreatic islet. But you can see here are the cells and see how they're connected. And then there's that main duct. And here it comes down like this. Here's the common bile duct, which is coming from the, the gallbladder, a subject for later. But all the enzymes produced, they dump into here. And the thing is, it's in response to uh, chyme or acidic chyme that's entering this area. If it has fat in it, that stimulates the gallbladder to release bile. But acidic chyme, uh, the pancreas makes sodium bicarbonate, which helps neutralize all the acid. Otherwise, the enzymes would not work. And then there's what is it's called pancreatic juice which is all the enzymes and everything all together. So here are all the pancreas enzymes. So just when I'm going through this, just remember they're produced um, inside the pancreas. They all end up in this duct and there's actually a couple of, there's a little bifurcation or a, a branch that, that actually helps dump in here as well. But here's where it dumps in. And this is re in response to food entering that area. Um, so here is, um, okay, well, I'm going to leave it right here, but this is some, um, it says right there, binding triggers secretion of enzymes and bicarbonate ions. Secretin is a hormone that controls sodium bicarbonate release. So let's go through the enzymes first. So pancreatic juice, all the enzymes that break down, say everything. Um, there's a whole bunch of categories of these. There is a pancreatic amylase. It splits polysaccharides into disaccharides. Same thing that's in the saliva, only it's called pancreatic amylase. Here's pancreatic lipase. It splits triglycerides into fatty acids and glycerol. So those can be absorbed. Um, there are three inactive protein enzymes produced by the pancreas. Now, in the lining here, and I'm going to use this one as an example, Make it bigger. So in this lining, there is actually an enzyme called enterokinase. It's produced by the cells of the the lining, the cells lining the inte the small intestine. And enterokinase activates the little protein enzymes. Like I was saying, they can't be active immediately. They would damage the cell. They would break down the cell that's making them. Here's all three of them: trypsinogen chymotrypsinogen and procarboxypeptidase. All of these great Scrabble words. They're all inactive. That's why it's indicated here. The enzyme enterokinase that's found in the lining of the small intestine, when enterokinase comes in contact with trypsinogen, you get a chemical reaction. Um, enterokinase converts trypsinogen into trypsin. Trypsin is an active protein splitting enzyme. When this is activated, okay, it in turn activates the other two inactive protein enzymes. Once trypsin forms, chymotrypsinogen is converted into something called chymotrypsin, and this procarboxypeptidase is then converted into carboxypeptidase. Now all three protein enzymes are now active. And what do they do? They split proteins into peptides and amino acids. 
the peptidase one here is the one splitting the peptides into amino acids. But protein digestion is not done yet. It, it starts in the stomach, or excuse me, yeah. It does start in the stomach, and the pancreas, you can see, is helping it. And then the small intestine also has some enzymes for that as well. Nucleases, the last category of enzymes, uh, they split nucleic acids into nucleotides. So all four of these categories come from the pancreas. So it's very important. All right, let's talk about the pancreas. You can see it here. A lot of times it's referred to as retroperitoneal because it's behind a lot of things. Here's the liver. The stomach, you can barely see the outline of the stomach. And I'm going to leave that alone. So I'm going to turn this around. I'm going to click on the pancreas. Now, the pancreas has, here's the tail, the body. Um, it actually has the head. We just sort of cover it as the pancreas. And a couple of things I want to point out. Um, let me see if I can get the duct. There it is. This is called the pancreatic duct. Now, on a, on a mannequin, that section usually is exposed like a cross section because you can't see it because I'm going to put it back. You can't see the pancreatic duct. I'm going to hide this part here. But the pancreas makes pancreatic enzymes and also makes sodium bicarbonate. And you can tell, I want this to, it's probably going to do a good extreme close-up Here's the pancreatic duct. See, it dumps in an area that's called the hepatopancreatic sphincter or, and also the ampulla. But here is the gallbladder. <clears throat> gallbladder stores bile. Bile gets released. This is the cystic duct, the hepatic ducts. There's actually two that go up into there. This is called the common bile duct. So it dumps in in the same area that the sphincter does that the sphincter, excuse me, the pancreatic duct does. And there's a couple of these, but you can see it comes down. And what happens in the duodenum, when acidic chyme enters this area, there's a hormone called secretin that gets released, and it causes the pancreas to dump sodium bicarbonate in that area to neutralize the acid so the enzy enzymes can work. There's also a hormone called cholecystokinin in response to chyme entering this area that causes the pancreas to release what are called the pancreatic enzymes, and there's a lot of those. And cholecystokinin, another is a hormone, also causes the gallbladder to also release bile in response to fat entering this area. So I'm gonna click on a couple of, well, it says hide, but I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna leave it like this, but you got a good look at the pancreas, and then this would be the pancreatic duct. Here's the other secretion of the pancreas, sodium bicarbonate, and it's in response to acidic chyme that's coming from the stomach. So in a way, this gets released first. It helps buffer the acid so that all these enzymes and the enzymes of the small intestine can function properly. It's controlled by a hormone called secretin. These enzymes here are all controlled by an enzyme called um, um, CCK, cholecystokinin. Sorry, it left me for a minute. And probably we'll add that as well up here. We do cover it here in a second. But uh, anyway, there's a hormone called cholecystokinin that controls all that. So great picture. So look, here's acidic chyme, and you see secretin is being released, and then it's causing sodium bicarbonate to be released and it's kind of well it's showing it coming out here so see the see it oozing from this little uh, pancreatic duct where the gallbladder and all of it comes together all right and that's uh, we're gonna go on to the to the liver next